In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to divide real numbers. So we already know the sign rules for this. Um, really, we're talking more about a process. And this is the same process we used when we were dividing fractions. We change divide to times and we flip the next factor. So that's why we had to talk about the multiplicative inverse before we could do this. So for this next problem, let's write the division in multiplication form and then simplify. Here's our problem. Negative 32 divided by 4. So in multiplication form, it'll be negative 32 times 1 fourth. See, these are the same problem, but this one is in division form and this one is in multiplication form. And now when I get ready to work it, of course, 32 times 1 is 32, and 4 is in the denominator, and this will simplify. 32 divided by 4 is 8, and it's a negative, so it stays negative. So now I am not telling you that you have to do all of this work just to get negative 8, because I'm pretty sure that you all looked at this problem right here, and you knew that 32 divided by 4 was, neg was 8, and that a negative divided by a positive would be a negative answer. So this, right off the bat, does not seem very useful, but it really is a useful way to work to look at the problems. And when the numbers get stranger than this, you'll appreciate being able to put it into a fraction form to work it. So let's look at another one. So same instructions. 22 divided by 6. So now this is going to make 22 times 1 6. See, I changed divide to times and I flipped the second fraction. And this is what they call multiplication form of this problem. So when I put this together, it makes 22 over 6, but this needs to be simplified. Both of these numbers can be divided by 2. So when I do that, 22 divided by 2 leaves 11, and 6 divided by 2 leaves 3. And now that we kind of get how the division thing works, I want you to learn to skip this multiplication step. Let's get where we can just go from the problem to a fraction form. You know that I'm going to, instead of writing this divide symbol, I'm going to use a fraction bar. And instead of writing the 6 in the top, I'm going to write the second number in the bottom. So let's try it out on 18 divided by 4. We're going to make 18 over 4. And then both of these numbers can be divided by 2. So 18 divided by 2 leaves 9. And 4 divided by 2 leaves 2. Let's try 45 divided by negative 27. So it's going to be 45 over negative 27. Remember what I told you about negatives. We never leave the negative in the denominator. So let's put the negative either in front or in the top. Now 45 and 27 can both be divided by 9. So when we do that, 45 divided by 9 leaves 5. And 27 divided by 9 leaves 3. So 45 divided by negative 27 is negative 5 thirds. And let's look at negative 3 fifths divided by negative 12 sevenths. So first, we'll have negative 3 fifths times, and we'll flip this over. So this is just a fraction division problem, and we do it the same old way we always did. And before we start multiplying stuff together, let's see if we can simplify this at all. I notice 3 and 12 can both be divided by 3. So here I've changed my 12 into 3 times 4. So I'll cancel out the 3's, and then I'll have negative 7 in the top and 20 in the denominator. So now let's talk about how to divide with zero. 
If we have 0 divided by 3, this becomes 0 over 3. And you know, if you have nothing to split 3 ways, you have nothing. So that's 0. But 3 divided by 0 is a totally different thing. In fraction form, 3 divided by 0 is 3 over 0. So this is, um, divided by 0 doesn't mean anything. It, it's undefined. So you can't take one thing and split it into zero parts. So having zero on the bottom doesn't mean anything, so we just say undefined. Now let's try it again. Negative seven divided by zero will give you zero on the bottom, which is undefined. And seven divided by negative two will give you zero on the top, which is zero. And if you have to memorize these two, zero on the bottom is undefined, zero on the top is zero, please do go ahead and memorize it. But you need a way to remember this. I know this is something people get mixed up a lot, but you need to get this straight in your head because they are two very different answers. And it's important to know which one is which. Zero on the top is zero. Zero on the bottom is undefined. Just make sure you know.